Thank you once again. Thank you so much for joining today. My name is Sarah Anderson and I'm the curriculum coordinator for A Taste of African Heritage and A Taste of Latin Heritage. And today we'll be going over our African Heritage Culinary Cooking Program. And so um, please join me as we you know, embark on this adventure together and learning more about African heritage through old ways. So first you may ask, which we get a lot is, what is a taste of African heritage? So if you look over on the screen over to your right, you'll notice our African heritage diet pyramid. This was created in 2011 with our committee of nutrition scientists and scholars of the culinary history and African food ways. Um, they came together, created this pyramid for us, and this is what actually led to our six-week um, cooking curriculum called A Taste of African Heritage. So what is the African Heritage Diet? The African Heritage Diet is a way of eating based on healthy food traditions of people from African roots and also a healthy way of eating that's you know, powerfully nutritious, delicious, and naturally meets the guidelines um, experts recommend for supporting good health. Um, and one thing we like to say is, you know, by reclaiming our heritage, we can reclaim our health. And that is really important because um, with this African heritage curriculum um, for our adults, it is a six week um, cooking and nutrition curriculum that is 100% plant based. And it's, um, it really represents foods across the African diaspora. And throughout the African diaspora, we mainly focus on West and Central Africa, the American South, and also the Caribbean and South America. And so how the lessons are split up with this curriculum um, is based directly off the pyramid. So you'll see lesson one is on herbs and spices. Lesson two is on leafy greens. Lesson three is on whole grains. Lesson four is on beans and rice. Lesson five is on tubers and mashes. And lesson six is on fruits, vegetables, and healthy lifestyle. Um, it's really important to us that we break it down this way as, you know, connecting with our African heritage pyramid. And, um, we love to emphasize that our African heritage and the Latin heritage curriculum is 100% plant-based and vegan. So um, you won't have to worry about um, any um, lactose intolerant issues or whatnot. So um, now I would love to give an overview. Um, we have a video here that was filmed on some of our African heritage and health ambassadors and also long-term instructors that are still involved with our community. Um, they'll be able to give you an overview of our program, and then we'll continue on talking about our African Heritage Program. So please enjoy. This is more than just about food. It really is about shaping people's identity and how they see themselves through their food, how they see their culture being a part of their health solution. The Taste of African Heritage and Health program is for anyone, whether it's been trying to lose weight, improve their health, lacking cooking skills, don't know other creative ways, enhance their meals in their homes. The research really does show that when we eat a more traditional heritage diet that we improve our health outcomes and I think that's really the core of what Old Ways is about and what um, it's doing in terms of helping the community this program now with the taste of African heritage and health. African Heritage Diet Pyramid was created with a committee of nutrition scientists, experts in culinary history and African American food ways. It's much easier to do because you can identify with that. I know what greens are. And so I can identify with, eat a lot of this. You can have uh, the brown rice and the millet and, and you know, the, uh, the barley. You have all of these healthy whole grains here. And those kinds of grains that really is a part of the heritage that needs to be built upon. On 
top of that, the tubers, the healthy starches from the yams to the sweet potatoes. And then you have the balance of fruits that will come from uh, everything from the tropical fruits like the papayas, the melons, the mangoes, the pineapples, the bananas, plantains, um, and them serving as really desserts compared to what we traditionally have now. Once you sort of shift your mindset to looking at your plate as more of a heritage plate, it's going to redefine everything that you can put on there. So when you look at a plate now and you say, that should have some whole grains, or that should have and beans, and my greens, and my vegetables, um, fruit for dessert, and the soul empowerment. This, this idea of um, connecting to your heritage and improving your health and connecting to your heritage. In the Taste of African Heritage and Health program, we evaluate how the students are going through the process and what lessons that we can learn to improve the program and what it has mean for their life and for their family and most of all, how they have improved their health. So my name is Danessa, Danessa Bowling. I live in Houston. I am actually on my fourth series of the class. I committed myself to do this for a full year. So it was a time of a serious transition for me. And so at this point, I had lost my mom, my grandmother, and my aunt to cancer. It's like, okay, being realistic, I'm overweight. I'm at risk for diabetes. Yeah, I'm African-American. I just didn't know what to do. I can't control cancer. I can't control heart disease. I can't control diabetes. I can control this. This is my thing I can do. And so I thought, well, I'll do it and I'll teach it and it'll help me. Is in addition to teaching and learning and eating healthy, you get this sense of community with people. This idea of culture being a part of your medicine. We talk about cultural competency, but we never really see the integration of culture in the form of community programs. And the Taste of African Heritage and Health program does the very thing that the community has been longing for and why it's being embraced so much more than ever and why it's so desperately needed. I believe that this can be the thing that could bring people together, where we could break down some barriers that we never thought could be broken down with food. The idea of our culture and our community, they both are tied into our cuisine, can be a part of our medicine, our nutrition. That's what this program provides more than ever. Great, so that was a video on our, um, from our African Heritage Ambassadors, just talking a little bit about the program. One aspect that I really like about our African Heritage curriculum is that um, it's a lot of instructors have used it as you know supplemental to their own practice. So some um, of our instructors are registered dietitians. Some of them have their own businesses. Some of them work through healthcare facilities, and they've been able to bring this to their community or bring this to their organization in a way that has been beneficial. And so it's really great. Um, hearing from the instructors and also seeing how they are able to use the curriculum um, in their own way. So now let's talk about the results from our African Heritage curriculum that we have. Um, so as you can see here, let me let's see my face on the screen. Let's see if I can move my face a little bit. Perfect. 90% um, of adult participants from our African Heritage class have been able to improve at least one healthy behavior such as eating more whole grains, vegetables, fruits, et cetera. And also in adults, systolic blood pressure has decreased by an average of 4.65 over the six week program. And then also 28% of adult participants have reduced their blood pressure by a full stage, either moving from stage two um, hypertension to stage one or stage one to elevated or elevated to doctor nor uh, <laughs> or elevated to normal. And this is something that's really important um, as advised by one of our African Heritage Advisory members, um, Dr. Allen. Um, within the African um, population, diabetes within the African community um, has um, a twice likely um, as high mortality rate compared to um, white individuals within our um, within the US population. So it's very important that um, we have these sort of we have this conversation, but also um, programs and curriculums that help, um, you know, go against that and also address that issue. And um, also to add on to that, um, 
if you are interested in learning more information um, about the results of our African heritage curriculum, we have several ongoing research programs with um, universities and are still publishing data. But if you have any questions, you can always connect with me afterwards. Great. So now let's talk about how would you bring a program like this to your community? And, um, you know, what are the aspects of it? So with we have for African heritage curriculum, we have the children's um, A Taste of African Heritage and also the adults. That one over to the right is the children's. That's our newest design we have. Um, and we offer two ways of licensing the curriculum. The first one is our um, purchasing it through our web store, and that would be the printed copies, thus including the teacher's manual and a bundle of 15 student handbooks. And um, it also will include our teacher inserts and the teacher inserts have the um, participation consent forms, the student entrance and exit surveys, the, um, you know, the grocery store um, shopping list. So for ingredients that you'll need and also health measurements, which is optional, but includes waist circumference, um, blood pressure, and um, there's a few other, but um, that is also included in the inserts. Our second way of licensing the curriculum would be through our yearly subscription, which allows unlimited usage for a year with our, um, with our curriculum. So with that, you would get the um, digital um, ebooks and access to the curriculum. So you would have the student handbooks, the teacher's manual, and also the digitalized um, teacher inserts. And it's really great because um, say you need to utilize that for, you know, of course teaching virtually with our current climate, but um, sending multiple student handbooks out, you could always email that to the students. And um, also if you need to print those out for your own individual usage, you can. Um, and the difference, I guess, a lot of people ask is, you know, what's the main difference between the printed and the, you know, the yearly digital access? Well, for the, printed, they never expire. So you can always have those on stock in the office and utilize those whenever necessary. And it's really great for in person. And, um, you know, as far as with our digital um, virtual teaching, I'd say it's a lot easier to do with the digital. And um, you could teach as many class series as necessary without having to worry about, oh, we need more student handbooks. So um, going back in and purchasing more. So Two very different ways, but um, both um, we definitely cater to both. So now I thought um, you guys are probably curious of what type of recipes do we have, or um, you know, how does the process go about, or do we have any pre-recorded cooking demos? And we do. Um, this one is one of our superstars. It is the Mafi stew. Um, it is, it's so funny because during our African heritage recipe celebration, it's um, our social media celebration for Black History Month. We're actually featuring the Mafe stew this week. So we're asking our um, audience and community members to um, definitely try um, preparing this stew and then posting those photos on social media for a chance to win a Old Ways um, cooking apron. So I would love to share with you a pre-recorded cooking demo we have of this mafe stew. And then um, I'll talk a little bit more about it and then we can go on to the next topic. So I hope everyone can see this video and I will double check. And then yeah, we have our question. The... Sneak peek. <laughs> So uh, let's get started. So first you're going to take your one onion that is diced and you are, you're going to first put some oil. <laughs> We're going to fry the onion and the garlic together. So I'm gonna pour some oil. The recipe calls for a pre-measured out amount of oil. Um, I just kind of do as desired, but I would suggest following the recipe for that. I'm just basically letting it coat my pan and I'm going to pour in my onion. And it's about 
two cloves into garlic. This is one clove here. Um, so we, you dice up two cloves of garlic and I'm going to pour my garlic in right now. So now what you're gonna do is you're gonna go to the, you're gonna go and put your, it's a mixture right here. You're gonna go and put this on the stove and you're gonna let it fry for about, you know, two, three minutes until it's translucent. So we're gonna put it on our stove right now. All right, so now we have our fresh, now we have our freshly fried onions and garlic. It's a great smell. Um, and basically you're gonna cook them until they're translucent. So just kind of a little bit see-through. Um, and you're going to pour them into a nice little regular stock pot that you have or stew pot that you might have at home. So, Pour that in into the pot. And now what you're going to do is you're going to add your vegetables. So you're going to pour in your zucchini. Your carrots. And your sweet potatoes. And essentially what you're going to do is you are going to put them back up. You're going to put this back on the oven. You're going to cover it and you're going to let it simmer a little bit for about three to four minutes. So essentially you're not going to cook your vegetables for very long. It's going to be a really short, it's going to be about three or four minutes. You're just going to kind of let them, you're going to stir them a little bit, let them cook just a little bit because they're also going to cook um, when you're making the rest of the stew. So this is just a great, beautiful mixture. I love this recipe as well because of all the beautiful colors that are represented. It's like such, so nice aesthetically and it's great, very aesthetically pleasing. And you have your nice little mixture of zucchini and uh, sweet potato and carrots that are right here. I think it's also very healthy, you know, sweet potatoes and carrots are both really high in beta carotene, which is really great for your eyesight um, and have great health benefits in zucchini. It's a great way for you to get your vegetables, your carbs, um, and a little bit of spice and flavor all in one meal. So now we're going to make the liquid part of the stew, of our stew. So you're going to pour in your diced tomatoes. So it's about one can of diced tomatoes, or you can dice your own tomatoes. Um, keep the sauce and just kind of pour it in and mix it into your pot. And then you're gonna take about two cups of vegetable broth. I've already pre-measured it out here. Low sodium vegetable broth and just pour that in. And then you're gonna mix that in. Just make sure everything kind of gets mixed up. And the the tomatoes and the vegetable broth essentially are the liquid basis for your stew. Um, the tomatoes add a great thickness and the stew kind of, you know, gives it a liquidy aspect. So I'm going to mix that in a little bit. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to put this back on the stove for about 10 minutes and you're going to let it simmer. So here is our beautiful mafe with all the different ingredients. You see how gorgeous that looks. And we're going to now add the last final ingredients to it. So we're gonna take about one fourth a cup of peanut butter. And I've already pre-measured it out here. So here's the peanut butter here. And we're going to take that and we're just gonna pour it into our pot. Very sticky. Uh, to me, it was very interesting to use peanut butter as part of a stew. Uh, but honestly, it adds such a great taste, especially in combination with the sweet potato. So first you're gonna add some peanut butter. You're gonna take your three sprigs of thyme that you already pre-chopped and just kind of pour that in there. And lastly, you're going to take about one tablespoon of curry powder. This up right here. And I'm just going to go and measure out about one tablespoon. We'll go, pour that there. 
You can also add, depending on your preferences, a little bit of salt. Uh, the recipe already has a lot of flavor, so I don't really think that much salt is needed, but I like to sprinkle just a little bit over it. Um, and now you just kind of mix that in with all the rest of the ingredients that you have. Make sure everything's in. And essentially what you're going to do is you're going to put this back on the stove for about three to five minutes. And that's it. Your mafe soup is done and ready to serve. So beautiful array of colors. Um, I'm going to pour it out into a bowl so you can see. And it's great for lunch or dinner. You pour it over rice. You can also add meat, um, chicken, uh, lamb, stew to this recipe. But we recommend a uh, vegetarian recipe with no meat, just like a lot healthier. Um, but makes a great little stew. This is what it looks like. So nice and fresh and great colors and great everything. Great, so that was our demo in Mafe Stew. I'd love to talk a little more about it. Um, Mafe Stew is um, historically common throughout West and Central Africa. This traditional stew can feature meat, vegetables, or seafood, and it's always, um, you know, it's very known for its savory peanut butter and tomato aroma and sauce. Um, this mafe recipe is in, you know, of course it's a part of our A Taste of African Heritage curriculum, but it's also an old ways original. Um, although they say, you know, it, um, you can add meat to it. I've tried it plenty of times without, and it was absolutely delicious. The peanut butter really adds um, a nice like sweetness, nuttiness to it. So um, it's excellent, definitely recommend. And um, yeah, that's one of our recipes and you can find it on our curriculum, super popular. <laughs> so now let's talk about how to become an instructor because um, we saw what she was doing kind of like a cooking demo and they're a lot of fun. So we actually provide um, training on our Old Ways website. Um, first, you would do is you would go onto our African Heritage program. You would fill out this teacher entrance form, and then from that, I would receive that and then send you along the um, video and quiz for the teacher's training. The video can also be found, and the quiz can also be found on our website. So over to the right, you'll see a video, and that's exactly what the teacher's training video looks like on our website. And you would watch that, it's only about an hour long and emphasize on, you know, it's free, so don't worry about it. And you don't have to worry about time constraints or anything. You can um, do teacher's training at uh, 4 p.m. or 1 a.m. We, we do not care because it is on our website and available anytime at your convenience. Um, and then you would take the quiz. Um, I would receive the results and then send the um, person who participate in the teacher's training a certificate. The certificate would just um, basically recognize that the person is now certified to teach an African heritage class series. So that would definitely connect to the children's and the adults African heritage class series. So um, let's definitely move on to what are some things that you can gain from our African heritage curriculum. I would like to emphasize also um, over to the what is that over to the right you'll see a photo of Gloria Fernandez. She recently did a cooking demo for us actually yesterday. So um, please feel free to find that on our social media outlets. We have our old ways Facebook page and whatnot. Um, thanks, Gloria. And then so you'll see over to the left here um, things that you'll gain from our African Heritage curriculum: food and nutritional training regarding the African diaspora leadership skills, community engagement and empowerment, competence and improvement in presentation skills, and also empowerment to help switch the narrative of African cuisine being unhealthy and greasy. Um, that's definitely things that we work on. And I think also with this curriculum, um, you know, emphasis on the way of um, community engagement, because we're currently going through a time of social isolation. And so Having these cooking class, like having these series, it's really a good way to get more people active in your community. And also um, you're spending six weeks together. You know, it's typically a six week series. So 
you're spending a lot of time together. And so you really are able to form, um, you know, sustainable relationships with your community members, which is great. So um, yeah, going forward, um, you've probably heard me speak enough about the um, African heritage curriculum. Um, now let's have some of our ambassadors, um, long-term instructors and people part of our community um, talk more about this curriculum besides myself. <laughs> My name is Deetra Dennis, and I'm a registered nurse and a National Board Certified Health and Wellness Coach here in the Atlanta, Georgia area. I've been a Taste of African Heritage instructor since 2015. Well, um, if you wouldn't mind me sharing a little bit about my background before, you know, how did I arrive at being an instructor? So um, being a nurse, you know, I really had the opportunity to um, meet some great patients, and many of them have had impact on my life, but there was one patient in particular. Um, he was well over 500 pounds, and he was in the hospital for a long time, and having the opportunity to be his nurse during his um, stay, you know, had a chance to talk to him for quite a bit, and, um, you know, like, how did he get to that point, and what was he going to do to, um, once he got home, to sustain a healthy lifestyle? Um, so he was discharged to an um, inpatient rehab because he had to learn to walk again and everything. And so when he went home, he went back to his old way of eating. And I'm sad to report that that young man passed away and he was in his 20s. So that really, you know, made me start rethinking about nursing care. So I began a journey of transitioning my nursing care from the bedside to the uh, sidelines as a health coach because the talking that I was doing to him was coaching before I knew what coaching was. And then um, also taking the nursing care to the table side because as I you know, was offering things in the community before becoming an instructor, whenever I talked about food, people were always excited and engaged. You know, food connects us, you know. And so I started on that journey, and so I really wanted a curriculum to help people sustain a healthy lifestyle. And again, when you talk about lifestyle, nutrition is 50% of that. And so I was looking for a curriculum that was one, evidence-based, and two, culturally relevant. And here I came upon um, A Taste of African, well, Old Ways, the company, and then their curriculum, A Taste of African Heritage. So that is how I got to uh, where I am today. So sorry, I am trying to get rid of that bar there. That engage culturally, culture because because. African heritage. So sorry, everyone. This bar, I was trying to get rid of it, but I see it will not the go bedside. away. So, really want so sorry again. That bar First, on the bottom is going to be there. Heard a taste of African heritage. I didn't know what it was. And we partner with the library once again, like I said. So my boss said someone needs to go, because we all support one another, someone needs to go to this um, demonstration of this new class they're going to be teaching, Taste of African Heritage. Who from here wants to go to my organization? We're all tired. Everybody's like, oh, I'm so like, oh, I'm tired. I went to something last week. Oh, I went. So I left me and another girl. So I'm like, fine, I'll go. Meanwhile, I'll start cooking the rice while I'm chatting. So I'm like, okay, I'll go. So we go, 
And when we get in there, there is a woman cooking. She's all, you know, I, I didn't understand. I didn't know what it was going to be about. So she has on like an African head garb. Come to find out, her name is Dijanaba. She's awesome. And come to find out that that's what Dijanaba wears all the time. She's, she's amazing. So anyway, Dijanaba's talking about taste of African heritage and the different diets and how we could benefit from it and who would be interested in teaching it. So she made a few things from the menu. One of them was something called garlicky greens. So it's collard greens, which we're all traditionally used to. So there's collard greens. Um, she made the sweet potato stew, the mafe. Um, and I thought, who is doing that? Who's making sweet potatoes in a stew? Like I never heard of such. So then there was, um, she had uh, the black eyed pea salad. And I was like, mm, I never liked them anyway. I don't know about this. Why am I here again? So she, <laughs> So she makes the, the collard greens and they call for mustard instead of meat. You're using mustard to get the smoky flavor. Now, the first time I heard that, I am not gonna lie to you. I heard, and she said, and we're gonna use mustard to get our smoky flavor and we don't use a lot of water. I was like, who is this person? And who made this diet? And why are they talking to us about it? So I sat up there on my arms folded, like I wasted an afternoon, I had other things to do. I listened to her, she made a great presentation. She showed how he, she made the greens, but everything else was pretty much made and they just brought it out the back, set it up for us to get a little taste. First thing I went to was the greens, okay? Because I'm thinking, Ooh, yeah, I wanna taste these greens with the mustard. These people are crazy. So I'm watching everyone's face as they taste it and go down the line and not one disappointed face. I said, these people don't know, for real. They just hear, they don't know what they're supposed to taste. So then it's my turn. I get some greens. They give you like a little bowl and I get the greens and I taste it. And I was like, hmm, taste them more. And I looked at her and she was kind of looking at me because I guess I must've sat there looking like I was five with my arms folded. So she said, um, so what do you think? I said, these look pretty good. She said, yeah, I know they surprise you, don't they? I said, yes, they do. And by the way, lemon is the new salt because there's no salt in those greens. It's lemon. Now it might take some getting used to. Some people might have to saw it after they tried it, but you know, that's how I make my greens now. Who knew? I didn't think I'd be interested in that, but who knew? So my class is uh, very much based on community. And when I say that, I just mean what brings us together. I think that's one of the reasons why I do ask people, why did you come? And I use that to, to build on that sense of community because I do very hands-on uh, sessions. I tell people, no, no, I don't cook, you do. And even if they don't know how to cook, it's all right. We're gonna figure it out together. So we have really uh, very dynamic classes where everybody is being involved. I can have five or six people asking me questions at the same time, and that's okay because there may be one person in the class that can help the other person out. Uh, but it's really about having a sense of self and being comfortable with self and what you're doing and, and, and imparting a sense of faith in your participants that you know that they're able to do it. And they really, really are. I mean, we've had the most delicious foods. I, I always have this high buzz in my class, always this high buzz in my classroom of excitement as everybody's doing the chopping and the preparing, et cetera. But once that food is done and you smell the aromas and then it's done and then hmm, it doesn't take any waste of time before they're there serving themselves. I mean, it's immediate and the room just becomes quiet. There's a hush over the room. So you know that food is good when you go from this high dynamic uh, sound and then all of a sudden silence. And then I'll come in and I'll just kind of do a wrap up as they're eating to talk about, okay, what are we eating? And talk about the importance of whatever that might be. If, it, if it's greens, it's greens. If it's tubers, if it's, if it's beans, if it's whole grains, we kind of chat in between and everyone can relate and tell their stories about uh, some people are from the islands and they'll tell us about how that food was prepared in their 
in their countries and others are maybe from the south or or some are uh, like well my mother just opened a can so this is new to me but it just is such a wonderful dynamic i find so I, it, it for me it works great i think for my the participants in my, participants in my classroom they always seem to be very thrilled by having the experience so i went to one of these classes through the organization that i work with um and it's um, it's called the Greater Philadelphia Coalition Against Hunger. We partner with the library. So what we do is I do SNAP applications. SNAP is directly tied to this organization, the Taste of African Heritage, because it has become, um, I think they call it SNAP eligible. So the SNAP guidelines are they want you to eat healthy with the SNAP benefits and the healthy diet fits with taste of African heritage. So they're, the government is kind of like the USDA is kind of like partnered with the taste of African heritage as well. So what we do, we partner with other organizations that bring healthy food to neighborhoods that don't normally have it. We connect people with SNAP and we also connect people with food pantries. Okay, and how to use the food you get from food pantries. A lot of times you get fresh vegetables, you'll get some rice, You'll get some cabbage and some veggies, and then you'll get, um, you know, like cans of uh, uh, peaches or pears or and tomatoes. So I'm like, what am I going to do with this? How does this work? You kind of have to make it work. And these recipes here can take the simplest ingredients and turn it into the most amazing dishes. I always ask people what brunch you get. You know, it's a good way to get to know your students. And one lady said to me, she said, you know, my son didn't want me to come. And I said, really? And she said, yeah, because he's afraid that I'm going to come home and cook some type of weird food. She said, but I'm here because I need to learn how to cook healthy. My doctor has already advised me that I have hypertension. I want borderline diabetic. And I don't want that for me. So I want to learn how to be able to be healthy. And I also want to be able to share it with my family. And I just thought, how brave of her to be able to say, because it's a lot of pressure, trust me, I know how to cook in ways that are delicious but not healthy. So when you get people who say, oh, no, no, please don't change, you don't want to disappoint your family. But you want to be, you want to be able to treat yourself good. And you also want to treat them good and you want to pass on something to them that you know is going to be a benefit to them for a long time. So I just I was just so happy to hear her say that she was able to realize the importance and the value of being there to learn healthy ways to cook. And she was not fearful of the rejection she might get and that she was looking forward to bring that home to her family and to share it. I'm totally plant-based. And so for me, it's always about um, having heritage on the plate, you know? <laughs> so for me, in my personal life, when I am going to a family gathering, I usually prepare something from the uh, curriculum, bringing that to the family and sharing that with them. Actually, I have one other thing. So with my family reunion, I uh, can't remember what year, and I think it was 2017. With my family reunion, I was asked to host a, a health fair. I was like, okay, I like health fairs and everything, but can I do it my way? And he was like, yes. <laughs> so what I did, I had the brochures. I had to get permission because you know, anytime you do any modifications to a, a family generational recipe, you have to get permission. So it was my grandmother's recipe for pound. And so my aunt has all of my grandmother's recipes. Um, and so I asked her um, if I could modify. And she said, yes. I said, but you have to promise me you're not going to tell anybody. I want to get the, you know, true reaction from them. So I used the, um, you know, we talked about the um, 10 steps to health through heritage. We talked about that. And, you know, just a little bit more about the program and really connecting to our heritage and really our ancestors 
to be truthful, and you learn about this in the um, program, is that our ancestors prior to enslavement were predominantly plant-based. They only ate meat for celebration. And so really getting that, you know, out to people to truly understand that, yes, soul food, you know, really the term soul food didn't come about until the 60s. Prior to that, I always like to say that the original soul food was that it was seasonal, that it was organic, meaning they didn't have to worry about the, you know, chemical pesticides. Um, it was unprocessed, so they ate things in their natural state, and it was local because they had each other um, garden or farm that they were um, eating the food from. So that, to me, is soul food. And so, and that acronym actually came from, um, I think it's Ballman College, but I was like, okay, I need to take that too. I'll reference them and let them know, but that is truly soul food. Um, and so, but anyway, getting back to the family reunion, you know, sharing that with them and then having my family taste the uh, 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 pound cake. And they were like, oh, this is good. I said, so do you think grandma would be proud? So, yeah, she'll be proud. It tastes really good. So then I shared with them, okay, well, this is uh, uh, not the original re recipe, if you will. It's modified, you know, not using dairy and things like that. They was like, no. <laughs> and I saw the classes and I began to taste the food and I thought, where have I been? This stuff is really good. And more importantly, the recipes that they share are very good for you. I think that the support I get from old ways and doing this class, because don't feel like you're out there by yourself dangling on an edge somewhere. You don't, it, it, and you're not. Uh, Old Ways is there with you. They obviously provide you with the curriculum and the things that you need to be able to, to uh, deliver to this class a, a structured learning experience. But if you have any questions, I've never had a question that I couldn't get answered. Um, so I think my tips for any new uh, instructors would be do your homework, um, not just on old ways as an organization, um, but any kind of uh, passions you have for the, the information that you're going to be presenting on, and also the student base that you're going to be working with, since it can be um, people who are familiar with the history and the people who are not. Um, so just having that background. Um, and the other tip would be be yourself. Um, be sure to bring part of you to the program. I think this is a, a, a project that invokes passions and um, motivates people to change the world. So make sure that that's clear to your students so they really know how important these small changes can be for their lifestyles. I would like to share my screen and um, show you some things that I, um, I did, I used as resources. So one of the resources, um, when you go to the Old Ways page, so you go here to Old Ways, um, when you go to the home page, you can hover over programs and select African Heritage and Health. Once you go there, um, you will have the sidebar here that tells you a little bit more about the program, but I want to highlight here, become a teacher. Here is the uh, new training video that's available, but I will scroll down and show you what really helped me. So when I did, we had, it was a different video, but I did um, watch the video and then I printed off, actually, I printed off all of the sub areas here. So each of these topics are best practices from other instructors on how they um, were able to be successful in um, bringing a taste of African heritage to their community. So when you're looking at getting ready for your class, you click here and it shows you find your class site. And then there is a template, an email that you can send out to your venues that you would like to host um, your, your classes. Um, and even right now with virtual, you can still you know, reach out to organizations that may um, would like to have virtual classes for um, their um, consumers, fundraising for your class. Um, and then um, if you want, if you have a kitchen or not, how can you still bring the class to um, a, your community? 
If you wanted to offer it as a solo or as a team, this gives you information as well. Recruiting participants, you know, really getting people involved. Like I shared, my part was getting the buzz out. And as you, you know, get more information out, you'll have more people interested and wanting to take the six week um, series. And then the kitchen tools that you will need. That is very helpful um, when you're getting there. So I consider all of this as turnkey. So that is your getting ready for your class. Now, once you, you know, do all your recruiting and get people involved or ready, then working with your students, then you go into the cooking portion, whether you're going to do it as a demo or you want to do hands-on. And for me, when I did my class, again, I like for it to be interactive because it's not just about me showing them, but I want them, wanted them to be able to experience it. So, you know, having that muscle memory, if you will, in creating a meal. So I made it fun, had music. Um, so I, in a sense, if you're familiar with the movie um, Soul Food, yeah. you know, everyone was in the kitchen, you know, everybody had something to do. So I created stations, and so everyone had a recipe that they were responsible for. One person did the reading off of the recipe, and the other one did all of the prep work, be it if it was cutting or if they were at the stove stirring. Whatever it was, it was a station. But we had music playing while we were doing that. Um, so we started off the class with, you know, going over the key messages, and then we went into the kitchen at the stations and cook. And then once we cook, um, and again, with um, the thing with this is everybody had a role to do. So, you know, like even at home, growing up, I'll say for us growing up, everyone had a role washing the dishes and setting the table. So even during the class, same thing. So that when we came to the table, we sat family style with everything that we had prepared and didn't have to worry about the dishes being piled up. And the table was set pretty because we always, always, always want that table to look pretty when you're coming to sit at the table because you eat with your eyes first. So um, sorry I went a little long on that. But and then it goes over tips on how to retain participants, making it fun. Again, if you make it fun, interactive, um, it, it really helps with the, the participants coming back for each session for the six weeks. Graduation day, I'll share with you how I did graduation day, um, which is session six. When you're going over the vegetables, but it's also going over a healthy lifestyle assessment. And so what I did, yes, every time we had, you know, the table set, I always brought table cloth, but I made it extra special on graduation day in a sense like Thanksgiving day, how you have the table spread and you bring out the really nice table cloth, you have your little candles and we have little, um, we had some sparkling grape juice, uh, white and um, of the darker grape color juice sparkling. So we cheered, you know, um, so really making it a fun day and like it was really a special day for them. Staying connected and carrying the torch after graduation. So what I did after, and this is a best practice within the teacher's guide as well, is to stay in touch with the participants, you know, up to a year. So what I did um, after the class ended, I followed up maybe two times after that, you know, for a month. And then after that, I checked on them quarterly um, in email, just doing a check-in. How are things going? You know, things that they had shared with me that they were going to do at the church to remain healthy, you know, just to see how that was going. Did they need more support from me? Um, and I'm happy to report that, you know, many of them are still um, talking about the recipes that we prepared and, you know, sticking to eating um, filling their plate with things that are connected to heritage. And then again, some fun class extras, um, additional activities and recipes. So that's that section. Now, as you get into the lessons, again, great, great um, best practices from um, instructors, you know, throughout the um, our network. On great, I'm gonna skip a little bit of this just because you can find the full video on best practices with Dietra Dennis, one of our ATOA ambassadors on our website. So I'm gonna skip a little bit forward, but she's fantastic. And to learn more, um, we actually have a best practice video with Dietra. Um, we're gonna go on to talk about just your last ending remarks. 
is Linda. Right there. Um, I would say, first of all, relax. Uh, you have a great set of tools. The curriculum is really great. So familiarize yourself with the entire curriculum. Go over it from front to back one time, read it through, and then be prepared to read it at each session before you go into a class. Uh, the curriculum is flexible enough so you can make it your own. Uh, you will cover all the points because it highlights the key factors, the most important parts of the, each, each session. And so you have that flexibility of saying, okay, these are the important areas. This is how I'd like to approach it in terms of whether or not you want to be more hands-on about it. Or in my case, I'm, I'm very, I am more hands-on about it. But if you want to be more of a lecture style or a, a demonstration style when it comes to the food, it's flexible enough so you can do that. So, so feel comfortable to say, I'm gonna make this my own. Don't, don't just say, well, what, what do they expect of me? Because you do have the information that's there. And it's gonna be up to you the way you, you feel most comfortable on how you wanna present it. As we're taping right now today in 2020, we are in the middle of COVID-19 and we've had to rethink how we do things. So we're not able to do things face to face. So again, a resource out there is virtual. How do you host a virtual um, cooking class? Best practices are right there for you. So again, everything is there at your fingertips. Great, so those were the testimonials from a few of our African heritage um, majority ambassadors and um, long-term African heritage instructors. Um, I bet you're probably thinking after that, um, what more could you learn about our program? And I have one last slide to go over resources that we offer and that can be found on our website. Um, our African Heritage Power Plate, which actually um, was in collaboration with, um, you know, between Old Ways and the PCRM and also um, Dietra um, assisted with this project. It includes um, eight recipes in it and it can also be found, it is free and it's on our website. We also offer a grocery store kit. Um, definitely thinking when we were more in person, but um, this is so for instructors who want to take their participants out to the grocery store, um, you know, they would actually know what ingredients to chop for for the class series because it includes the grocery list, um, three demo recipes to try out, um, visual aid handouts for the um, guide. And then also we have, you know, of course, fun key points and our African heritage um, diet pyramid, which was featured at the beginning of this presentation. Um, and then we also have, this is a really fun one, is setting up your African heritage kitchen. Um, I like it because, uh, you know, at the end, it definitely has two grocery um, shopping lists that you'll be able to utilize, of course, for the African Heritage Series, but also in general. And then it also tells you how to organize it within your kitchen. So, you know, what needs to go into the fridge, what can sit out on the countertop or the kitchen table, what should be placed in the pantry. Um, so these are all um, free resources that can be found on our um, Old Ways African Heritage Program site. So um, we welcome any and everyone to take a look at those and utilize those. And now we're at the end. Um, I would like to say thank you so much. And um, of course, I'm uh, able to stick around for questions um, also, but if I, I can only get to so many questions. So if you um, need to contact me, there's my email and there's the website but I'll check now to see um, what questions we have and be able to assist with that. Let's do stop screen share. Perfect. All right. And now I see two questions. Okay. Perfect. All right, well, great. Um, yes, perfect. Well, I do not see 
Great. Well, thank you everyone for joining. We're right on the dot. Um, I don't see any definite questions at the moment, but everyone has my contact email and um, you will also be receiving a follow-up email with um, additional resources, some mentioned in this presentation and some not. Thank you so much for joining us today. Um, and I hope everyone has a great day. And um, welcome to the community. Please follow us on, we have our Facebook group, we have our um, Instagram page, we have the YouTube, uh, we're, we're all in there. We're, we're even working on a TikTok. <laughs> um, oh, I do see one question. Have you ever considered getting the children involved in healthy cooking demos? That's a really interesting idea. Um, we have the, of course we have the children's curriculum um, you know, available and that's within our African heritage curriculum. Um, you know, it's the separate, but it's a part of our African heritage program. Um, I guess that would be up to the instructors. So if you're an organization that's licensing the children's curriculum and wanted to um, do cooking demos with the children, um, that would be really cute and um, super useful, I think also for um, getting more, um, you know, family members involved. But um, yeah, not yet. Oh, um, we have another question from Pam. What tips do you have to make virtual classes as interactive as possible? Yes, yeah, so we actually have, let me get for you. On our website, we have tips for um, virtual teaching. And it is um, basically, it's specifically for our African heritage program. And um, it was during the transition of moving uh, virtually that we kind of create this page for, um, for instructors, but I will, um, it's gonna be included in the, um, you know, thank you for watching this demo presentation email. And then here's also a link to, sorry, that's kind of gross, but feel free to click on that and, um, we can definitely talk more on it, but we have plenty of tips for um, social distancing and teaching virtually. So, um, you know, definitely includes like, um, I would say from my own experience, a lot of people like using Zoom for um, screen share, Google Hangouts, um, Office Teams, and um, Eventbrite's a good site for posting your event on there, or, you know, if you're working through an organization using their website or social media streams. So, yeah, thank you um, so much. And I don't wanna take up too much of you guys' time. Um, this has been great. And um, I don't see, I do see a few questions, but um, yes, if we have any additional, um, yep, yep. Uh, are these traditional RCs that have been made with meat um, have now been made vegan? Yes, Michael, all of the recipes on our, um, a part of our curriculum and even on our, um, you know, that we offer with our Latin heritage and African heritage are 100% um, vegan and meatless. If the instructor, um, you know, someone who has already licensed a curriculum decides to utilize meat in that, that is up to their own discretion, but um, we focus on plant-based, so yes. And then um, consider how to grow these healthy foods um, that we love and eat. Um, yeah, a few of us staff members have our own um, little gardens and um, even organizations that have uh, licensed the curriculum have um, been able to, some of them have their own community gardens. And so they've been able to use a lot of those ingredients in teaching the series, which is so cool um, and definitely uh, advisable. Um, can this program be taught to a diverse audience? Of course, yes. We, um, a lot of libraries, healthcare facilities, um, we have so many different partners from universities and they teach it to everyone and anyone who is interested in learning more about our African heritage diet. Um, it's not like you directly have to have that ancestral roots. It's definitely, it's great for um, people who are interested in exploring different, um, you know, cultural diets and it, provides a lot of information on, you know, um, culture connected to the African heritage, um, you know, in the African diaspora. And it also goes a lot into, um, you know, focusing on the health benefits and kind of debunking the myths that you hear about our, um, you know, um, soul food or, you know, um, the African uh, American diet. So, um, it's really great and it can definitely be taught within a diverse audience. So, 
and Dietra, yeah, <laughs> yes, it celebrates diversity and fosters interconnectedness. So absolutely, um, yeah, uh, definitely on Dietra's point. So yes, that is all the questions I see for now. So I'm gonna end and thank you all so much for joining and um, you guys have my email. We'll send you guys everyone a follow-up email. So thanks again. And I hope everyone has a great day. All right, bye. <laughs>